Thanks for waiting. And I thank you for joining us for this ARCHES webinar on internationalization and localization. My name is Annabelle Enriquez, and I'm an ARCHES project team member at the Getty Conservation Institute and today's moderator. Presenting is Alexi Peters, who is the Director of Web Development at Farallon Geographics. And during the Q&A session, we will be joined by Dennis Withrich, CEO of Farallon Geographics. Some housekeeping notes. If you, have an, if you have a question for Alexi about today's topic at any point, um, feel free to enter your question into the Zoom Q&A interface. Also, um, if you have a, a Dennis is here and um, both Alexi and Dennis are um, developers on Arches. And so if you have any technical questions, um, you can ask them even if they're not about internationalization or uh, localization. The, the chat function is disabled for attendees. So please do use the Q&A interface for your questions. If someone has asked a question that you also want to know the answer to, you can upvote a question and we'll definitely get to those. If you need captions, this webinar does offer live captioning, which you can enable by pushing the show captions button, uh, the show caption button on the bottom menu. This webinar is currently, <clears throat> excuse me, this webinar is currently being recorded and we will make the recording available within a week and you will be notified of this if you registered for the webinar or if you follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn, or are a member of the Arches Community Forum. Now, before I bring Alexi on for his presentation, I did want to preface his presentation by saying that when we're talking about internationalization and localization, which is the subject of this webinar, what we're really talking about is the interaction of the Arches software and different languages. Alexi is going to go into this more, but internationalization has to do with Arches, how Arches, how the Arches software handles the use of different languages and localization of, is about the translation process. Now, Arches has always had the ability to incorporate different languages in the interface. To date, more than 30 different languages are used for various ARCHES implementations around the world. But today, we are going to highlight the new and enhanced language handling abilities that now come with ARCHES version 7. And this is an instance in um, development, in ARCHES development, where an ARCHES community member contributed to the development work. So thank you to the Arcadia Fund, as these new features were made possible through their generous support. Okay, so now I will turn it over to Alexi. Thanks, Annabelle. Let me share my screen here. Hopefully all can see that. So yeah, we're gonna talk about internationalization and localization in Arches. Uh, that's the main subject of this webinar. And part of that will cover uh, what internationalization and localization mean, uh, the language that Arches is currently localized in. We'll review a few examples of what Arches looks like when it is localized. Uh, we'll go over the RDM and any implications there, what we did to localize business data, uh, what users might need to be aware of when customizing Arches, and then we'll just quickly review a few tools that you can use that can help users localize all the strings in Arches. So without further ado, let's jump in. So internationalization versus, versus localization. Internationalization really uh, is the process of 
designing a piece of software so that it can easily display or be displayed in alternate languages. That is, rather than the old school way of maybe copying uh, a web page and then just changing all the text that you see on the interface to be a different language so that now we have two web pages. Internationalization really is the process of, 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 of engineering the software so that a non-technical user can then supply an alternate language and the interface then will display in that language. That leaves us with localization and, and localization really is just translation. Um, Arches has many, many strings, um, and I'll just say text, really, uh, that you see on the UI. And those, when, so when I say localization, those are really, uh, the, the, the text is really what we're talking about. We're, we're talking about translating those text strings. Anything that you can read on the, on the web page needs to be translated or localized. And all those texts... Um, need to be localized. So uh, uh, a kind of new, so something that we were able to achieve with uh, this latest release of Arches and Arches V7 was that Arches now is completely internationalized. That means it's ready to accept uh, any alternate language that a user would like to display the UI in. And, and they'll be able to do that um, again, without any kind of expertise uh, so that they can just focus on translating all the, all the text in the UI and then supply it in a single file, put that into Arches and Arches will now display be displayed in that language. So currently Arches comes 100% localized in English, of course, that was, the, that was what it was developed in but also now French, Urdu, and Hebrew, and is around 80% localized into Arabic, Bulgarian, Russian, Mandarin, and Spanish. Um, another thing uh, that Arches, or that we were able to achieve with Arches was that the user interface, the UI, fully respects right to left languages. So I have a few slides later on, I'll show you. Um, but there are several languages that are read right to left. And um, if the UI wasn't updated, then you would be reading right to left strings in a manner, uh, and, and it would be presented in a manner that would be potentially confusing. So we have actually um, gone to the effort of, of making sure that the UI itself uh, respects right to left languages and is presented in a right to left manner. Finally, you may have seen uh, this acronym I18N <laughs> floating around, kind of intermingled with uh, the concepts of internationalization and localization. And it really, it just it's just a shortening of the word internationalization. Uh, uh, somebody must have been you know, tired of writing out that long word internationalization and decided, oh, I'll just count the letters in between the I and the N, the first and the last letter, and I18N was born. Um, you probably also will see or come across L10N, that's just localization. Uh, same deal. Uh, and there's one for globalization and so on. So I, 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 you'll, you will see and encounter those if you, if you get into the localization and internationalization realm. And that's what that means. So let's move on. So here's a couple examples of, of what the English, uh, English site looks like, which, which we're all, I think, familiar, fairly familiar with on the left. And here on the right now, you can see the UI has been translated and all the strings have been translated, all the texts have been translated into French. And here's how the UI presents. And You'll notice that things like tabs and button names, and even these buttons here, any labels are all translated into French. And in fact, you know, as languages are, they can be of varying length and width. You know, our, 
our UI respects the fact that languages can grow and shrink and accommodates those. So here you can see the button is quite a bit, or the text rather is quite a bit bigger, but the button stretches to fit that text. One thing you also may notice though, is that these, these names right here, which are node names, are not translated. They are still in English, even in the French UI. These are, this was done for a reason, I was on purpose. Um, node names actually never really show up outside of the designer here. And because node names are used in uh, APIs uh, for that support arches, so application programming interfaces, really a ways for arches to communicate with other uh, systems, uh, consistent naming is kind of key. So using consistent node names and fixing on a single node name was uh, kind of really required. And again, they never really show up in the UI. Uh, an end user viewing a report or doing any editing or being, or using the search page will never see these names. So let's take a look at another UI here. Okay, so here we have the UI now uh, translated into Hebrew. And you'll also notice that, like I mentioned earlier, Hebrew is a right to left language, uh, rather the, the printing is printed in that from that direction. And then the UI just mirrored itself. Um, and we made, went to great attempt, you know, great lengths to make sure that the UI was consistent and, and reflected the nature of right to left languages. So here again, all the strings, as you would expect, are translated into Hebrew this time. Um, but not only that, the UI itself now reflects the fact that it's a right to left language and the, the navigation bar is now not on the left, it's on the right. And you read the whole site from right to left, uh, just like you would read it from left to right if you're using English language. And then finally we have the site in Urdu. Same thing here. It's a right to left language. Obviously the scripts are different now, it's in Urdu. Um, but everything is as you would expect it. If you were an Urdu speaker, a native Urdu speaker, you would hopefully expect to see something like this and it wouldn't be jarring. It would be just fairly natural. Um, all the strings are translated, all the text is translated. And the site again is, is in being rendered in a, a right to left fashion. So here's a more complete example of a complete UI. That is, I'm now focusing on, uh, I mean, all the bits and pieces that we've just previously discussed are, are, are of course still translated. Um, but this time I'm showing an actual card and you can see cards do show up in the UI and they do need to be localized or do, do need to be translated. And you can see that here, all these are card names. And you can see that the cards, um, which are really just bits and pieces of the UI that, that um, aggregate information together. And they have labels and they have um, things like help texts and labels for individual data elements. And they even show, uh, information for concepts localized and you can see that here here's an example of a concept drop down and the elements uh, are in fact translated into hebrew in this case and i left one untranslated I, I did this myself so forgive me if the translations are not perfect um, but i did I, I left one untranslated just to show that yes if you don't have something translated as far as the concepts are concerned you will still get um, a reasonable default. In this case, it'll it'll fall back to English, the base language of the site itself. But here you can see every bit and piece of the UI now is in Hebrew, really. So this is kind of a complete example. And that means we have to localize the resource model. Uh, each model, again, has cards defined against it and widgets and all these little labels and strings. Um, so that has to be localized and um, translated uh, before you want to release um, 
a, 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 a translated version of Arches. So here's a more kind of specific example, or rather, a, I guess, a deeper example of the RDM. This is um, a way to manage uh, the SORI. And the RDM has always allowed uh, entry of, of, of labels in alternate languages. So you can see that up here. Here's an entry for the, the concept copper, which is a metal. And um, it comes localized into several different languages, uh, German, French, and PT. I don't actually recognize that. Um, and um, it, when it, you, so you can localize that or translate that, those concepts. And then when the UI here on the left is a, a presentation of the English UI, and here's um, uh, the English UI with the uh, material co collection of concepts. And you can see that copper is one of the entries in here. It's in copper is in this collection. Uh, but when I present the UI in French, now, Copper is actually, I don't even know how to pronounce that, couvre, maybe? But copper now is shows up in French, as, as you would expect again. Uh, it, it respects the fact that this now UI is being presented in French, and it does its best um, to present all concepts in French, if available. So this is kind of a an example of the RDM and how it integrates with all the localization and internationalization work that we did with Arches. So one of the final pieces um, that we had to tackle was the ability to localize actual data. So this is data, this is information that people will enter, enter into the UI and save off as information that they want that arches to manage. And string data or texts um, that people enter, um, we would like to have them or give them the ability rather to save those texts in alternate languages. And so we've done that. The, uh, the original text input was just a, simply a text input previously. Um, and we've added this little drop down. And so, for example, um, Dennis likes to use this example a lot, but the name Mona Lisa, uh, the painting we're all familiar with, um, has or is known by many different names. And so, in English, people know it by Mona Lisa. And when I type it in, uh, I can save it. And if I'm viewing the site in English, then by default, it'll just save that. Uh, associated with the English language. Uh, alternately, I can save it in other languages, and I have this little uh, GIF here. So I can save it as Mona Lisa. And again, the, the UI is in English, so it, it'll naturally default to the English language. But I can then save it in French. And I can enter the name it's known as in, in France, Jaconda, and save it in French. And you can see back, I can go back and forth. I could just select the English and there it is in English and there it was in French again. So I can save multiple, um, I can save the string in multiple different ways with multiple different languages, uh, depending on how it's known in that language. And previously this would have to be done with an actual model. You'd have, you'd have the model would have to be uh, designed in such a way to accommodate this. And now we've just given the end user a little more flexibility. They don't have to change the way they model their data to accommodate uh, alternate languages for these, uh, these strings of data that people would enter in the UI. Um, so that's kind of the core that covers like the core changes that we made to arches and how arches responds to all the um, the internationalization and translation efforts that we that we put into it um, and if you 
are creating a project in Arches and you're not doing anything custom, for example, then really all you have to do is, but you still want to, of course, you know, display the, the UI in alternate languages. You, you, all you really have to do then is, is translate your resource models. That is all the, the labels that show up in the UI. But you don't have to do anything other than that. And um, that's, you know, a pretty relatively straightforward process. But if you are customizing arches, that is, if you're creating a project and need to use, let's say, a custom plugin or anything like that, that relies on additional files to render correctly, then you will need to kind of go through a mini effort of what we went through um, by internationalizing those bits and pieces, the custom bits and pieces uh, of an arches project that you would not want to present in alternate languages. Um, so for example, in an HTML file, you're going to have to wrap um, your strings in kind of a simple uh, way to denote to the system that informs the system really that this is a string that needs to be translated. And that's kind of the same pattern throughout these alternate files, these other files as well. If you're in a Python file, it's kind of the same idea. You're wrapping it in this uh, specific way that just informs the system, okay, this is a string, it's going to need to be translated. Um, and we'll expect and will allow for that, that text to be substituted with an alternate language if an alternate language exists. Same thing for anything that needs to show up in a JavaScript file. There's a, a very similar way to, to tag a, a string as being uh, needing uh, as, as being localizable or translatable. Um, and again, you'll have to go through all those things. And I'll just say that there is uh, in in the documentation, it kind of goes through a little bit of a few of the things like this that will guide users um, and what in all the things that'll have to do to make that possible. So finally, um, I just want to review a few localization tools. Uh, Arches itself, and we've used ourselves, um, uh, this system, uh, it's an online system called TransFX. And Arches relies on a pretty common uh, format for storing internationalized or, local, or translated strings in the system. It's a, a .po file. It's a pretty common format. It's just it's just really a text file. There's nothing uh, magical about it, um, but it defines yeah. all the strings and uh, defines their translations. And you can, in fact, edit uh, that file directly if you wanted to. But there are tools that help and assist uh, the translation of these all these text strings. And TransFX is one of them. It's an online tool. Uh, we've used it, Arches rather, Arches have used, has used it, and it simply allows you to kind of manage um, the, the languages that are being translated and also allows you to collaborate or users to collaborate on the translation of those all these text strings so that it's not uh, just done by one person in isolation, but it can be done kind of publicly um, and the translations can be shared and viewed publicly and even commented on if, if necessary. Um, but it's a, very, it's a very kind of open and again, kind of public uh, way to, to manage and translate strings. Uh, it's not the only thing that you can use. There's a, another piece of software called PO Edit. I think it's, I believe it's free, a piece of software. Again, it's just something you download. It just really, again, makes it more easy to manage all these strings. And there are quite a few. I think there's over, over a thousand strings, almost 2000 strings, I believe. Um, but allows you to compare the strings and see if where things are translated, where they're not translated. Um, and again, it's just it just assists you in making and in, in in managing the translation. It doesn't do the translation for you. Finally, there was actually a piece of software that somebody related to the Arches project created. It's called PO22 Excel, and I'll just mention this quickly. Um, this ascent, this piece of software essentially puts all the strings into a spreadsheet and then leverages Google Translate, uh, Google Translate engine really to translate the strings for you. Um, and, you know, the, you know, your mileage may vary as far as the quality of the translation goes, but at least it's a start and can be a, a good way maybe to just to kick off a, a translation a translating effort 
um, and would probably still require somebody to review them at least, but this, this piece of software will literally translate things for you and allow you to input and output PO files essentially via uh, an Excel file. So there's, there's, there's software out there that can help uh, make the task of, of, of translating all these strings less daunting. And uh, with that, uh, just thanks for, for attending the webinar. Um, again, if you have questions um, about uh, translation or internationalization or really anything uh, related to ARCHES, there is a forum at communityarchesproject.org. Um, you can go there. You can also find that link directly from the archesproject.org page. And like I said, there are there is documentation about localizing arches in uh, our in our documentation. Read the docs, and you're uh, welcome to again post on the forum and ask questions. There's uh, that's really what that is for. So with that, um, I will hand it back over to Annabelle. Uh, thank you, Alexi. For that. Um... So um, this is just a reminder now to, if you do have any questions for Alexi and Dennis regarding internationalization and localization or any other ARCHES technical questions, uh, feel definitely a, a type your question into the Zoom Q&A interface. And um, I will be monitoring that to see what questions pop up there. But um, so, but before I before I we address any questions, uh, and then I'm going to give you some time to enter your questions. I'm going to ask Dennis if um, Dennis, do you have any um, anything to add to Alexi's presentation and what he? Um, thanks, what he Annabelle, said. and thanks, Alexi. That was really really good, very informative. Um, I thought that was a really nice summary of what we mean by internationalization and what we mean by translating localization um i just wanted to add one little bit of um, additional detail and that is those of you with really sharp eyes saw that alexi was really focusing on i think one of the key aspects of arches which is its ability to let you define the content of your arches application like you can define your database models your models are really uh, something that you know better than anybody. And the real trick here with supporting internationalization and localization is um, allowing the community to do a translation of the basic, the base arches application, and then giving you the tools to translate your own models and data entry forms directly. So uh, that I think is one of the one of the I think really kind of key and amazing parts of the work that that we've done. Right. Yeah. yeah, I would just just maybe I can just just add a little bit to that. That's that's exactly right, um, Dennis. I maybe kind of glossed over that, but um, you know, Arches is a is a complicated piece of software, and um, and what makes it complicated is the fact that yeah, users can essentially define big chunks of the of the user interface via when they when they create resource models. And you know, I don't want to toot our horn necessarily, but um, you know, that's how you know how to how to manage and and uh, or manage these strings on basically um, bits of the UI that that we can't know ahead of time. Um, so uh, the the translation of the strings and the text related to resource models it was kind of a, a technical, I think challenge and uh, and something that we were overcame um but uh, again allows and there's and, and allows users again the ability to translate those models um either via the ui or or outputting them via again these these po files uh great um all right we have some questions that i will go ahead and um at least in order Okay, so the first question is, looks like it, it's about Arches of Science. Uh, greetings, Stephanie and Damien from LRMH in France here. I am mostly interested in Arches for Science. Any information about the roadmap? And do you know when it will be released? I think this is a question for me and Dennis. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so um, just to give you an update on Arches for Science, um, uh, I mentioned Dennis and I are both on that on that team and we're currently in the process. We're still in development, but we're also in um, testing mode and we're hoping um, to um, we're hoping to have more information about release or any more information about the roadmap um, next year. So we'll we'll be updating the community on um, on when we expect to release Arches for Science to the community. Dennis, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, a couple of things. Firstly, I'm I'm pleased that people have actually heard of Arches for Science. So yes. thank you, thank you, thank you for the question. <laughs> Uh, it, it's a project that we're pretty excited about. We're, for those of you who don't know, we're building an Arches application that is meant to extend what Arches can do, particularly in how Arches can be used to manage the digital data created by laboratory instruments. So imagine Arches uh, managing not only objects like works of art and the artists that produce them, but also the instruments used to examine them and the activities used to investigate works of art and ultimately the sampling of a work of art and the results of that sampling effort, which oftentimes is really a series of digital data files. They might be the files produced by a GCMS or by Raman spectroscopy or XRF. Uh, there's a whole universe of laboratory instruments that scientists use to investigate materials. <clears throat> and Arches for Science is designed specifically to extend um, the ability to manage and visualize the data that come out of a laboratory instrument. Uh, and what I can tell you is we have Arches, a version 0.9 of Arches for Science working. It's being tested, actively tested right now by a select group of conservation scientists. We, are, we have some workflows in place to, um, to manage conservation data. We have a few more workflows to finalize. And as Annabelle said, we would expect to have a, uh, a final roadmap and release date um, available for people at some point uh, earlier, ne earlier next year. That's right. Um, and um, I don't know if you, I don't think you mentioned this, but for for some of those for some of you who have been in the community for a while, um, you might have heard about this um, version or this uh, this version of Arches as Disco. And it, it's the same thing. So essentially, Arches for Science is if you've heard of Disco, that's what Arches for Science is. And um, Disco is actually an, a specific implementation. It's actually the implementation that we are testing out at the Getty Conservation Institute at our labs. Uh, okay, great. So hopefully I, um, I don't have a, um, more information about the, any specific dates, but definitely, um, definitely make sure to follow us on social media and um, join up the forum and be part of the announcement list because that's definitely where we will be announcing when we have more when we have more information on Arches for Science. Thank you. All right, the next question is from Thomas Hewitt. Um, if I recognize typos in the French translation, for example, how can I correct them once the stable version of Arches has been released? Uh, Alexi? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Thomas. That's, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I guess the the short answer is uh, the translations uh, are stored in Arches um, all, like any other, actually, honestly, like any other file uh, that we manage is, with the code base. And so keeping that in mind uh, and the fact that we use a GitHub to manage all our files, the, the, the simple answer, I guess, is you can simply uh, clone arches and make the changes locally and then submit a pull request that that would be the kind of sorry for the technical jargon, but that would be the, the way to, to submit uh, corrections to translations. And I'll just say that also tr translations aren't static. Um, 
they will go out of date um, as Arch's software gets updated over time. Uh, so what's been released now will work again with this version of Arch's, but um, once new functionality comes online and new and new really new text uh, in the UI becomes available, those will have to be translated. Um, but submitting a PR is really the way to do that. Um, and the way that we should do that to manage these things uh, uh, effectively. Okay. All right. Um, Dennis, did you have anything to add or? Yeah. The, this, I think, actually touches on uh, a kind of a bigger question and, and maybe even is the beginnings of the answer to the next question, which is, I believe, about availability of arches in other languages. I think the example here is in Ukrainian. And the key idea here is uh, the community can, you as a member of the community, of the arches community, and maybe even a member of a specific part of the community, uh, the community of arches users who want to support French, can work together to keep the up to keep the translations of arches up to date. And that means essentially managing the PO file. And uh, and you can do that. You can do that as a shared as a shared work. It doesn't have to be done by a single individual. Um, it you can do it by yourself, but there's value in in sharing the effort. The, the idea that many hands make lighter work, I think, is part of this. But also, Alexi's bringing up a key point here, which is Arches is, is not static. It's going to continue to grow and evolve. And as we add new capabilities, that implies new user interface. There will be a need for uh, members of a particular trans of a particular language group to uh, continue to update the the translations for for Arches. And it would be good to get in that habit. So if you really care about arches in, in French or Ukrainian, uh, it's an invitation to roll up your sleeves and uh, look at the translations that have been done already or begin tr new translation. And as new versions of arches continue to come out, making sure that, they, that the translations are in sync with the new capabilities of arches as they're released. Mm -hmm. Can I, yeah, I'd like to also add something. I, you know, um, everything that Dennis said is, of course, true. Um, um, and I'll just point out that the only reason Arches comes with the language that it does is because people in the community did step up and actively volunteer, essentially, to to take on the task of of translating all these strings for Arches, so that Arches could come with these languages. Um, we don't have a bunch of language experts on our on our team to translate arches, and really, we are relying on the community um, for for that work. So, if you have a specific interest in a specific language, you know, don't hesitate, and you have the time and ability, don't hesitate to to volunteer. Um, and it really just helps the broader community um, and provides you know an interface uh, in arches for for people in that language group. So. Yeah, no, I think all, all of those are good points and just a, it's a good reminder of how, um, you know, the, right now the Getty, Con the, the, the Getty Conservation Institute um, funds a lot of the development, but I mentioned um, at the top of this presentation that all of the internationalization, the new features that you saw in version seven were the result of a community member, uh, the Arcadia Fund, um, contributing to the development effort to make that available for the whole Arches community. And so the same is true for, um, for translations um, and also and other, and other aspects of Arches and Arches community um, resources. So we have, um, we have community members who are also involved in the documentation efforts for Arches as well as um, not just translations of the interface, but also translation of materials on our website for information for other people who are new to Arches. So the, uh, really the, the, the beauty of the Arches open source community is that it is, it is a community and um, 
and we're able to leverage that and for the bet the betterment of everyone in the community. Okay, hopefully, Elena, that um, answers your question. All right, so if, if you are available to volunteer any services to translate in Ukrainian, we absolutely would welcome that. Okay, let's see. And then, um, Stephanie, there is a... Um, there is a clarification or at least expansion. Um, so Stephanie is a scientist evaluating artists for science as a support tool to organize her own research as well as for the full laboratory. And Damien has done some Django development external to LRMH. If you need more testers, we will be pleased to be involved. Thank you for the information. We'll definitely keep that in mind. And thank you. Um, thank you for volunteering. All right. Um, you're welcome, Elena. Yeah, I'll just I'll just pop in and say, yeah. I mean, it's uh, you know, Arches is open source, and although you know we're we're you know doing the bulk of the work and maintaining the software and 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 upgrading the software, it is really a community piece of software, and that's and we really would love to have more members involved in in you know taking on certain aspects of the software if they you know if that's what they want to do and they shouldn't feel afraid i guess of of contributing if they have good ideas or or can contribute fixes to things or you know suggest new uh, functionality again it's all i think it's all you know good and 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 something that we're we would love to have so great uh, so we have a question from Samuel Skander uh, has the database Slash ORM output change now um, that multiple strings can be saved in different language, or is it represented as EG? And then this is, I don't know if you can see that, Alexi, where it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, you see that for, for one tile. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is a pretty technical question, but. Uh, so previously, of course, when 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 Arches was just a single a single language uh, system, uh, we would just store uh, in in a tile uh, against a single node just the value of that of that of that string. Um, that object or that what we're storing now really is just an object keyed to language, honestly. So that seems like a very specific and technical answer. Um, but what used to be a string and what we used to save as a string. So if somebody typed in Mona Lisa, for example, uh, all we'd simply do is save the string Mona Lisa. Uh, now it's tied, of course, to a language and, in fact, a directionality. Um, so that what we store now is a, a slightly more complicated uh, object. And again, like I said, it's it's keyed to language. Mm -hmm. Hopefully uh, that answers your question, Samuel. Definitely follow up if you have a additional questions regarding that. Okay, and um, I do have um, some questions here for me, <laughs> for myself, Alexi. Um, is there a limit to how many languages you can represent in a single Arches interface? Um, th there isn't really a technical limit, no. Um, I mean, uh, you, you know, I guess if you had hundreds of languages, uh, uh, that would be a long drop down to select to, to select from uh, as far as the UI is concerned. But th there is no technical limit on the number of languages that Arches can be represented in. Um, it's okay. it's yeah. And um, I, I'm assuming the answer is yes to this, but you can tell me. Um, that I'm assuming that you can have a mix of like right to left and left to right languages in a single Arches instance, that it will just toggle between the, the two um, directions? So um, you can certainly have uh, two in multiple languages in Arches, as I've just demonstrated. And one of the languages can be in left to right, and the other language can be in right to left. And the, the, the user interface will flip and will accommodate either language. Mm -hmm. If you're actually speaking about a single language with a mixture in that single language of right to left and left to right, um, that does become a bit more tricky. Um, 
And I would have to actually come back to you on that and how we can render that. I, I, well, I know, in fact, that works because, uh, for example, Hebrew has intermingled into it some English uh, words, like the word arches, for example. Um, and that I believe, you know, that renders properly. So you can mix within a single um, text string, both right to left and left to right. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um... Also, um, another question I had, and this is just more of this is along the lines of tips for localization. Um, if someone has, if someone is either using Arches or wants to use Arches and knows that they're going to be using languages other than English, what's what's how do, how would they start? What would be the first thing that someone should do if they want to localize their version of Arches? And probably I will say that the first thing I, I can imagine would be to make sure that they're using Arches version seven or upgrade to Arches version seven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, that would be step one. Um, yeah. uh, once you've done that, um, yeah, there are commands. I mean, so what you'd want to do essentially is you'd, you to, to, to not make this too much of a burden on yourself, you would want to make sure that your models are, you know, as final as they can be. Um, if you start to do this work before your models are finalized and you continue to revise your models, then you'll end up kind of having to redo translations of strings that have changed as you're redoing your models. Um, so if, as long as things are mostly finalized, that, that'll pose the least amount of work for yourself. And then once those things are finalized, uh, there are commands in Arches that Arches comes with to essentially generate these uh, an empty PO file um, for a specific language. So if you wanted to do it in Portuguese, for example, you could um, create a PO file that was ready to go for Portuguese and then translate. Then with that file in hand, you could then, you know, using trans effects or using a local editor, um, uh, translate all those text strings uh, into that, into Portuguese, and then simply just place that file back into your system and now you have Portuguese. I um, mean, one final step would, of course, be hopefully you would commit that back or uh, to to the uh, the community itself, uh, so that Arches in the future could come bundled with that. But that's what you'd want to do. Yeah. No, I, that definitely. Um, so your last point um, goes back to the question we had about um, the availability of different languages, and so um, I, and now you both alluded to that earlier about how um, the community members can submit and um, con contribute translations. Um, and so, and it's not just for that particular community member, it's, so if, if, a, if a community member donates a translation in Ukrainian, then it will be, be available to everyone in the community. And so it, it, it would be helpful that if you are um, translating your, uh, your implementation of Arches, if you could make your, um, your PO files available to um, the to the core arches, that would be very helpful to the whole community, and yeah. very much appreciated. Yeah, and even if you're not a developer and you're not quite sure how to do that, you know, you can always pop on the forum and say, you know, I have this, I've translated, and I've gone to all this effort, and I want to share it with everybody else. You know, how, how do I do that? And we can help facilitate that. You know, so if if you don't, if you're not familiar with GitHub or anything like that, um, somebody can help you out and we can make that available to everybody else. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a, a question from Junaid Abdul-Jabbar. Um, are there any specific CSV or file requirements for bulk importing localized business data? Ooh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, the requirements are, uh, they're, they're there's the, this obviously the CSV file format changed a little bit to accommodate uh, localized business data, um, but but really what it is what it boils down to is you have language specific columns uh, encoded in, in in a specific way or rather just you know the, the the column header is encoded in a specific way that really allows you to key incoming business data to a specific language. So previously, for example, if your CSV had a uh, name as a column, 
Um, and that's where you stored your name information. Now you'll have, um, I believe it's name underscore I know ES for Spanish, for example. But anyways, it'll be it'll be a specific column naming uh, convention that you will then put your language specific information into. So the requirements have changed a little bit, but they're still similar. Uh, so regarding that, Alexi, if um, say if um, if you know you've got name or um, you know if it if it's name and then name French name Spanish name um, Portuguese. If mm -hmm. um, do, do you have do you have to um, what if you don't I guess if you don't have to um, fill in where it's the name English right if if or the default name if you're not if your interface is not in English or do you right right um, no you don't no okay. I mean this is this is uh, the business data so really it's up to you uh determine what your business what languages your business data should accommodate so yeah you don't you don't absolutely do not have to use english um or provide english if you don't either have it or don't want to provide it so no mm -hmm. no okay. requirement for that great hopefully that answers your question Junaid. um the next question um about the, uh, the forum so volunteers can go to community.archesproject.org, and that is the URL for the Arches Community Forum um, that's powered by Discourse. Um, yes, actually, anyone in the Arches community, if, um, if you're new or, or if you've been in the community for a while, can go to community.archesproject.org and post any questions you have about the Arches, uh, about Arches, period. <laughs> so if... Um, so do feel free to use that forum and as a way to ask questions of the of your other of your fellow community members. Also, to um, there are a lot of you'll see that when you go to the community forum that there are, there might be a lot of technical questions, but we but that forum is really it is for technical questions, but it's also for any other questions that whether they're technical or not, or any other announcements or um, just any kinds of interactions with the community um, that you might want to engage in. So yes, absolutely. Um, and I would encourage everyone to join the forum and um, either, um, and to, to keep abreast of what's on there. Right. So hopefully that answers your question, Alana. If you have a follow-up question, do, um, do ask it. All right. Okay, um, let's see. Time. How are we doing on time? We're doing really well. Um, are there any other questions? Um, Dennis, do you, is there anything that you think um, people should know about um, the topic, about internationalization or, or localization that we have not yet touched upon? I think we've given people a nice introduction today, or hope we've given people a nice introduction today. I, I suspect that questions will pop up as people pursue this in a little bit more detail. And mm -hmm. the the idea of going to the Arches Community Forum, I think is maybe a really the best takeaway here. So mm -hmm. that that would be my that'd be my recommendation is as you start to look at supporting additional languages in your Arches applications, if you do have questions or you have insight, the forum is a really a great way to to share that. I was actually just looking at the forum this morning and uh, there's a new new contribution from a person who was looking at installing Arches v7 for the first time. And that person came back with some suggestions for how to improve uh, the documentation. So that's really valuable feedback, super helpful. And what's true for installation is true for internationalization. As you work on this, and you see uh, what the tips and tricks are for making it go smoothly. Sharing that is a great thing. Or if you just have questions, the forum is really the place to go. So that would be probably my biggest recommendation. Yeah. Again, you know, I think as an open source project, we are uh, we're very we're very dependent on the strength of our community. And so um, so. So the more that people participate in any fashion, the better our community becomes, and also the better our software becomes. Because we have the more 
the more eyes that are on the software and also the supporting documentation, the better it'll become. Okay, great. So I'm not seeing any other questions. So going once, going twice on the questions. All right. Um, Alexi, did you have anything to add before we close this out? Uh, no, uh, not really. Um, hopefully, you know, hopefully everybody got what they were coming for when, uh, when, when it came down to internationalization or the localization. But again, the forum is a place to go. We're on the forum quite a bit um, um, and hopefully can answer any questions that come up. But, you know, there's a lot of other smart community members out there as well. And they've been, we're grateful for them when they jump in uh, and answer questions too. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. appreciate them. And so again, uh, so the community forum, that's the <clears throat> URL there. And also, um, if you haven't already gone through the Arches Project website, there's uh, that website is pretty full of information on Arches. And again, that's what that's also the sort of thing that if you have any suggestions for how information is presented, please do feel free to get in touch with us on the forum and let us know. Because um, if the if the website it can be improved. We would like to hear ways that it can help you better to as in your Arches journey. All right, great. So um, thank you everyone for attending this webinar. Again, this is this has been recorded and we will be providing this recording uh, um, in, a, in, a, in a, within a week. And we'll be letting you all know that it is out via the, via the forum and via social media. And also we will be letting people know who, um, who registered for this webinar. Thank you, everyone.